Good evening everyone and welcome to this very special live interactive gala event with The Chase. I'm Melissa Hartzell and I'm delighted to introduce your chaser for this evening. We're used to seeing her as the mean governess on The Chase, but tonight she is her lovely self. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne Hecate. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, it's lovely to be here. And it, it is weird not to be in character for once. I mean, I am normally wearing my governess costume 24 hours a day, on the chase, going to the supermarket, whatever. You even dress as the governess in bed? OK, I'm pleading the fifth on that one. <laughs> but since I'm here, I thought it would be a good idea to get this lot playing along with a live quiz, which will start in just a few minutes. You'll be able to join in at home on your computer or mobile device. And if one person has the most points at the end, they will win our £2,000 prize pot. If there's a tie at the top, the prize pot will be split between the winners. And not only that, but later on in the show, we'll be giving you another chance to win in a live game of bingo with a full house prize of £250. If you've signed up to play the bingo, you should see your numbers on this very web page. There won't be any auto dabs, so you might want to write your numbers down if you want to play along later. And in a moment, I'd love to ask you some questions that some people have sent in for you. First, though, let's take a look at you in action on the chase. You've got a reputation for being quite mean, but you can be very charming, especially when it comes to some of the male contestants. Have a look at this. Hello, Hello, Alex. All right. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> I would totally throw my knickers at you. <laughs> Hello, Keith. Hello, young lady. Mr Duffy had a few duff answers there, didn't he? I think you just got to pat your eyelashes, show your blue eye. I think, you know, patty in your hand. He's pretty, he's brave, he's not too smart, he's just the kind of... <laughs> And it is for charity. Right. So you can come out of character for a second and help me, if you choose. But no. I don't choose. But if you do choose... <laughs> something wrong with your eye. <laughs> I love your blouse, by the way. Thank you. Beautiful. Hello. <laughs> I've got to salute that moustache. <laughs> It's very Biggles, isn't it? It's a little bit Biggles. I it's also a little bit Tickles, Anne. Come on. <laughs> now, what say... <laughs> what say you get a few of these wrong and I'll show you? Hello, David. Hello, how are you doing? Ooh, I just want to lick you all over. <laughs> Um, what can I say? People, people love a governess. By the way, if you love The Chase, there are some great games based on the show here on Gala Bingo, so check those out after we've finished. Now, a few of you have sent in some questions for Anne, and here they are. So, Anne, first of all, Pat asks, how did you first become interested in quizzing? Um, well, I was always a nerdy child, um, and I always used to read a lot, but I didn't start doing serious competitive quizzing until about, it was uh, 2009 when I got told right. that there was this high level quizzing circuit um, that I didn't know about. Uh, and I got into that um, and very quickly people started, it was around that time they'd just done the first series of The Chase without me. Um, and people quite quickly started talking about me as a potential chaser. Oh, amazing. And so you've not looked back. I know. Samantha says, you are the best chaser. Oh. Do you enjoy being famous or did you prefer it when people didn't recognise you? Um, I, I, by and large, yeah, I enjoy being famous. Um, I mean, you know, occasionally you're a bit tired. Uh, you know, you've done a lot. You've been wearing a mask for four hours. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you'd kind of rather not... Um, do a selfie, especially because you were kind of hoping that people didn't even recognise you in the mask. <laughs> that turned out to be wrong. That turned out to be wrong. Um, but by and large, I mean, yeah, you know, these are these are the viewers. These are the people who who, who make the show uh, a big success. So you know, obviously, you, one, one one tries to 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 cooperate. Yeah, and I wonder how many selfies you've ever done. It's probably loads. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <I've done. laughs> right. So Gillian says, "Did you like it in I'm a Celebrity, and would you do it again?" 
Uh, no and no. <laughs> um, if you, uh, I, I don't mean, blame I, you. What I did love was the people that I was in there with. I was just really lucky to be in a year where everyone was just utterly, utterly lovely. And everyone looked after me and uh, we're still, you know, we're, we're, I'm such good mates with all of oh, them. Oh, that's so nice. And, uh, and that is brilliant. So, so you don't um, miss the rats, you don't miss the bugs? The rats I didn't mind so much. I mean, what, I'm, what I worked out that what I mind is anything that scuttles. Mm. Um, um, and uh, and I find that I dislike cockroaches more than I realised I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, rats I didn't mind, snakes I didn't mind. You're braver than me. <laughs> <laughs> Kath says, if you could do a quiz with anyone, who would it be? Um, uh, by with, I, I assume you mean alongside, yeah. with them on my team. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the chasers have got their own strengths. Um, Paul, the cinnamon, is actually my pairs partner in, in pairs quizzing. Right. Um, and Paul has got so good. I mean, I'm beginning to feel I'm a bit of a drag on him. Mm, surely. No, honestly, he's that good. Um, but uh, he, he would be superb. Any of the England A team, I mean, Kevin Ashman and uh, Pat Gibson are, you know, like, the best quizzes in the world. Um, so they would be superb. Uh, Olaf Bjortomt, I mean, I can't actually play on a team with Olaf because he's one of the chase question setters. Mm. And uh, it's in our contract, yeah. we cannot be on a team with chase question setter. Um, but, uh, you know, he would be really good. Um, guy called Ian Bailey. Um, uh, these are the four who are on the England A team. And Ian uh, absolutely stomped me and two other quizzers in the uh, final of Brain of Britain wow. um, just over 10 years ago. Um, and he's also a Mastermind champion. So, so uh, quite really a dream well. team oh, that would yeah. be, wouldn't oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> I'd make them just do all the work. <laughs> right, well, I think we've asked you enough questions, Anne. Why don't you ask them some questions? That's right, it's time for our big live quiz. I'm going to give you three rounds of ten questions each. All the questions are multiple choice, but be quick because you'll only have ten seconds to answer each one. Whoever has the most points after all three rounds could win that £2,000 prize pot. If there's more than one winner, we'll share the pot. Get ready, everyone. Each question in this round is worth one point. Here we go, then. Question one. After Brussels... What is Belgium's second most populous city? Is it Bruges, Ghent or Antwerp? As well as being famous for its beer, chocolate and waffles, Belgium claims to have invented French fries, which is not at all a misleading name. The second most populous city though is Antwerp. Question two. What is the common term meaning quick and intense flooding that occurs within hours of a storm? Is it flash flood, surge storm or whirl water? This is a nice easy one. At least one of them sounds like a brand of hot tub. The answer you should have got is flash flood. And well done everyone. It looks like 358 players got that one right. And lots of you are tied at the top of the leaderboard, including Wheeler Dealer, Chuchi Face, and My Lily 20. Here comes question three. In popular culture, the forbidden fruit in the story of Adam and Eve is commonly depicted as what? A peach, an apple, or an orange? Now, the Bible doesn't mention any specific type of fruit. But since Milton wrote Paradise Lost in the 17th century, it's been referred to almost always as an apple. Moving on then with question four. Which of these geometric shapes has the most vertices? Is it pentagon, octagon or hexagon? This should be fairly easy as long as you've got a basic understanding of geometry or Greek. From the Greek word for eight angled, it's octagon. Easy to remember because an octopus has eight tentacles. And well done to 196 of you that got that right. Okay then, question five. 
What part of the body is commonly described as inny or outy? Navel, neck or nose? If you don't get this one, you're probably in the wrong live stream. About 10% of the population are outies, which of course means that their navel sticks out. Moving on to question six. According to a common superstition, putting what new item of clothing on a table is said to bring bad luck? Is it a dress, jeans or shoes? Putting this item on the table is said to signify that somebody has just died. I don't believe in all that myself, but if I did, then I would avoid putting new shoes on the table. Amazing work. After those six questions, we've got quite a few people tied in first place with six points, but that could all change, so make sure you keep concentrating. You'll need to be concentrating for question seven. The hairy flower chafer is a species of what insect? Is it grasshopper, moth or beetle? This insect eats the leaves and flowers of many deciduous trees and shrubs. It's sometimes referred to as the bee-like flower scarab, which of course means that it's a beetle. Question eight. Which disaster movie does not involve a natural disaster? Is it San Andreas, Dante's Peak, or the Towering Inferno? This film was actually based on two different but very similar novels. The producers decided to combine The Tower with The Glass Inferno, thus creating The Towering Inferno, about a skyscraper on fire. That's so interesting. And looking back at the stats, I can see that 258 of you knew that. Good film knowledge, guys. Here's question nine. What form of paganism derives its name from the Old English word for witch. Is it Neo-Druidism, Shamanism or Wicca? This is a fairly recent movement that spread throughout England in the 1950s, but its name is lifted straight from the Old English word Wicca. And question 10. Joseph Malin is credited with opening the first takeaway of what variety in the late 19th century? Was it fish and chips, pie and mash, or kebab? Malin was a Jewish immigrant living in East London, and around 1860, he is credited with opening the first shop selling the dish we know and love as fish and chips. I didn't know that. Well, we're one round in and it's still all to play for. Right now at the top of the leaderboard, we have Dav3199, Smuzz44444, we have Bexy and Tomo109, and you all have 10 points. Let's crank up the tension, shall we, Anne? In the next round, each question will be worth two points. Here comes round two. Round two then, starting with question 11. In 1865, UK law required that all automobiles be led by a pedestrian doing what? Was it carrying a red flag, banging a drum, or sweeping the street? The speed limit at the time was four miles an hour in the country and two miles an hour in the city. I'm pretty sure I can push a car at that speed. Even still, as an extra safety precaution, somebody had to walk in front of the car carrying a red flag. Question 12 then. A volcano is commonly classified as active if it has had at least one eruption in the last how many years? Is it 10,000, 20,000 or 30,000 years? I wanted to include this question because I heard that active volcanoes are hot right now. 
I'm sorry, I did not write that line. The answer is 10,000 years. Keep up the great work, everyone. And I can tell you that 293 of you got that one right. These questions are definitely harder than the first lot, though. Well, we don't want to make it too easy, do we? Question 13. In film production, what is the term for a wheeled platform mounted with a camera to provide steady tracking shots? Is it Polly, Holly, or Dolly? The first of these pieces of kit was patented in 1936. It had three wheels and was called a camera carriage. I suppose someone must have thought that name was far too literal, and so it's now referred to as a dolly. Here comes question 14. The site of a historic conflict, which of these is the name of an East Sussex town? Is it combat, skirmish or battle? Now this was the site of the Battle of Hastings, so you'd think they'd just call it Hastings, wouldn't you? But no, someone decided to name this place Battle. Just looking back at the leaderboard, I can see a few of you tied at the top there with 18 points. And lots of people are around that score, so keep up the great work. Right then, question 15. In psychology, the initials EQ denote a person's emotional what? Is it limit, intelligence or interest? None of those answers begins with a Q, so that's really no help whatsoever. The Q actually stands for quotient, which is a bit of a clue because it comes from IQ or intelligence quotient. So the answer is intelligence, something you've certainly got plenty of if you're getting these questions right. On to question 16. The classic Care Bears character, Good Luck Bear, has what symbol on its body? Is it a four-leaf clover, a horseshoe, or a rabbit's foot? Okay, I have to say, 80s stuffed toys, not exactly my specialist subject, but I can tell you, Good Luck Bear was one of the 10 original Care Bears and had a four-leaf clover sewn onto its chest. Lots of you are still very close at the top of our leaderboard, including DAV3199, Tomo109 and Backboard. Well done. Keep it up. You've got this. Moving on then to question 17. Musician Scott Joplin was best known for playing which instrument? Was it piano, saxophone or drums? This composer and performer was known as the King of Ragtime, enjoying huge success around the turn of the 20th century. With hits including The Entertainer and Maple Leaf Rag, Scott Joplin was most famous for playing the piano. Question 18. Which of these fish includes no species native to tropical waters? Is it angelfish, seahorse or tench? This particular species is most likely to be found in the rivers and lakes of Europe and Asia. And the answer is the tench. Well done, everyone. That was definitely a tricky one, but 269 of you managed to get it right. Here comes question 19. Queen Elizabeth II was born during the reign of which British monarch? Was it Victoria, George V or George VI? Elizabeth II is the longest reigning British monarch with 68 years on the throne. She's also the fifth longest reigning monarch of all time. She was born during the reign of her grandfather, whom she affectionately called Grandpa England. That's so cute. We know him as George V. And the last one in this round, question 20. Which US president was in office when the Berlin Wall was first constructed? Was it Harry S. Truman, John F. Kennedy, or Jimmy Carter? Now, Ronald Reagan was in office when the wall fell in 1989, 
but it was first built around the middle of the 20th century, at the peak of the Cold War. It was built in 1961, early in the presidency of John F. Kennedy. There's one more round to go, and you know what? Shall we make this last round interesting? Shall we make each question worth four points? Well, I don't want to just give away points willy-nilly. I'm going to have to make the questions a bit tougher. Oh no, and I thought they were hard enough already. Good luck. Get ready for your third and final round. Here we go, starting the final round with question 21. Iron meteorites mostly consist of iron and which other metal? Is it copper, nickel, or silver? Iron meteorites are actually incredibly beautiful, and if you cut them in half, they reveal a unique crystal structure, which is formed by varying levels of nickel. Question 22. What was the original name of the online auction site eBay? Was it Electronic Bay, was it Auction Web, or eBay? When the site launched in 1995, the first item to be sold was a broken laser pointer. When the seller contacted the buyer to make sure he understood it was unusable, the buyer responded, I'm a collector of broken laser pointers. Someone's got to be. In those early years, the site had the name Auction Web. Very well done if you knew that. You weren't kidding about these questions being harder, were you? I don't kid, Melissa. Here's question 23. The start and finish line of which racing circuit features a strip of bricks known as the Yard of Bricks? Is it Indianapolis, Monaco or Nürburgring? Until the 60s, this entire track was paved with 3.2 million bricks. They were replaced with asphalt in 1961, but a narrow strip of bricks is still visible across the start line of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. On to question 24. What term is given to those who fall in between Generation X and Generation Y? Is it X's, Generation Y or Xennials? Generation X sometimes gets called the baby bust, while Generation Y are usually called millennials. So everyone in between is called, no, not bust Y, it's Xennials. Do you think it's pronounced Xennials or x -ennials? Very strange word either way. Even still, let's have a look, 230 of you clever people got that one right. Well done. Moving on, question 25. Pettifogger was a term for a dubious practitioner of what profession? Was it lawyer, physician or dressmaker? Now this is made up of two words. Fogger was an old word for an underhand dealer and petty means, you know, petty. And more specifically it might mean someone who deals with petty crimes. Someone like a lawyer perhaps. Yes, lawyer is the answer, but I'm very impressed if anyone is that clued up on their 16th century slang. Here's question 26. The ruins of the ancient city of Carthage are surrounded by which capital? Is it Cairo, Algiers or Tunis? Carthage was a hugely important city in the Roman Empire and it was one of the biggest and richest trading hubs in the Mediterranean. Nowadays, it's a wealthy suburb of Tunisia's capital, Tunis. As we head into our final four questions, I can tell you that the top score is currently at 54 points. Quite a few of you are close to that and you're doing such a great job. Well done, everyone. Here comes question 27. Often worn by bullfighters, a Montera is a style of what? Is it hat, necktie or shoe? 
This item of clothing forms part of the traditional dress of the Iberian Peninsula. Made of fur and lined with velvet, the Montera is a hat. Question 28. In which bodily organ are the Kupfer cells? Are they in the brain, the heart or the liver? These cells form the lining of the sinusoids and are involved in the breakdown of red blood cells and you would find them in the liver. I have to say this has all been very educational. I'm learning lots about anatomy. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Question 29 is another anatomy related one. In 2020, what is the average amount that the tooth fairy pays out to UK kids? Is it £1.30, £1.49 or £2.5p? This is actually 20% lower than 2019. Obviously, times are hard for the tooth fairy. Poor her. In 2019, it was £2.5p, but this year it's come down to £1.49. And finally, question 30. Which of these capital cities is three hours behind Greenwich Mean Time? Is it Mexico City, Buenos Aires or Ottawa? All time zones are based on Greenwich Mean Time because it's considered zero degrees longitude. In other words, we like to think Britain is the centre of the world because of course it is. The answer is Buenos Aires. A massive well done to everyone for making it through those chaser-worthy questions. But who had the most points after three rounds? Oh wow, Fragly000, zero, zero, zero. you have won with a possible oh, 69 points out of a possible 70. Well done to you, you've won the £2,000 prize. Congratulations. Well done, everybody. I was really trying to trip you up there. Now it's time for another quick clip of some of Anne's best moments as the governess on the chase. What have you got for us this time, Anne? All I can say is keep watching if you want to see the start and end of my cheerleading career. <laughs> You'll also see an epic staring competition between me and a contestant. No prizes for guessing who won that. <laughs> Let's have a watch. Hello, Sasha. Hi. Sasha, the cheerleader. Yes. Two, four, six, eight. That's the number of the bus you'll be catching home in a minute. <laughs> I did not just do that. <laughs> Hello, James, the math teacher. Hello, Anne. I've no intention of being kind to you. You're used to handling big figures. You're about to be handled by one. Oh, indeed. <laughs> that was a pretty decent cash builder. And I also respect the fact that you want to have Hogwarts in your living room. I used to have Daniel Radcliffe in my cellar until he escaped. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hello, Anne. I like my wine like I like my men. Smooth, full-bodied, easily picked up in supermarkets. And drunk. Here I am. <laughs> Are you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew is so going low. I wish I could make him a minus offer, but I can't. Oh, it's a stare down now. We're short on time anyway, so I mean, this will fill a few minutes. <laughs> I've been advised by my lawyers to say I didn't really keep Daniel Radcliffe in my cellar. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You're a sweetheart, really, aren't you? No. <laughs> OK, everyone, we're giving you one more chance to win, and this time it's all a question of chance. Yes, that's right, it's time for our live bingo game for £250. If you've signed up to play the bingo, then your numbers should appear on this web page. Feel free to write them down if you want to dab along. OK then, eyes down. Starting with 36, 3 and 6, 36, 
12. 1 and 2, 12. 32. 3 and 2, 32. 28. 2 and 8, 28. 90. 9, 0, 90. 46. 4 and 6, 46. 41. 4 and 1, 41. 79. 7 and 9, 79. 55. All the fives, 55. 75. 7 and 5, 75. This is great. I can feel the tension building. Eyes down for your next set of numbers. We've got 39. 3 and 9, 39. 1 on its own, number 1. 14. 1 and 4, 14. 17. 1 and 7, 17. 88. All the 8s, 88. 81. 8 and 1, 81. 73. 7 and 3, 73. 63. 6 and 3, 63. 85. 8 and 5, 85. 61. 6 and 1, 61. How's everyone doing? I don't know about you, Melissa, I'm starting to wish I'd entered this. If someone's going to win £250, I'm just sitting here reading the numbers. Huh. Next one is four. On its own, number four. 49. Four and nine, 49. 70. Seven, zero, 70. 62. Six and two, 62. Five. On its own, number five. 42, 4 and 2, 42. 40, 4, 0, 40. 30, 3, 0, 30. 20, 2, 0, 20. This is so exciting, isn't it? We must be getting close. Has anyone got a line yet? Remember to win, you need a full house. Next up is 50, 5, 0, 50. 83, 8 and 3, 83. 56, 5 and 6, 56. 53, 5 and 3, 53. 8, on its own, number 8. 54, 5 and 4, 54. 45, 4 and 5, 45. 7, on its own, number 7. Six on its own, number six. 78, seven and eight, 78. All right then, the next number is two. On its own, number two. 31, three and one, 31. 58, five and eight, 58. Three, on its own, number three. 48, four and eight, 48. 77, all the sevens, 77. 69, six and nine, 69. 22, all the twos, 22. 52, five and two, 52. 29, two and nine, 29. Okay, focus everybody. There's 250 pounds at stake here. Here we go, 67. Six and seven, 67. 10, one zero, 10. 84, eight and four, 84. 66, all the sixes, 66. 37, three and seven, 37. 35, three and five, 35. 38, three and eight, 38. 74, seven and four, 74. 68, 6 and 8, 68. Oh, bingo, bingo. oh, oh, oh. I think we've got a winner. Go. Congratulations, K94. I can see lots of I can see lots of I've got confetti <laughs> down my bra now. <laughs> oh, I wasn't
expecting that there. No, I Caught really me wasn't. A cry. <laughs> I can see lots of you came close to having a full house, but Kay takes our £250 prize today. Great work, everyone. That's it for our evening of quizzing and bingo. We really hope you've had a good time. And if you fancy more bingo fun, head to the TV specials room to play the chase-themed games. There are some going on right now. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. Thanks for joining. Good night. Woo!